Hello fellow guitar geeks, I'm back, or in fact this might be the first video, here at Klangfarbe in Vienna. It's a music shop, I'm in the custom room, thank you to Klangfarbe for inviting me. And today I'm looking at this, Gretsch Gold. Now it's the G2212 Streamliner Junior Jet Club Goldus. That's a big long name, that's like almost Ibanez territory, but with real words. So the G2210, I'm going to call it the Streamliner Junior Jet, or just the Junior Jet. It is a single cut, clearly. Let's have a look on that camera. Uh, single cut, a beautiful sparkly gold finish. Beautiful. It's got two pickups. It's got one master tone, one master volume, and a, a three-way switch. Most importantly, um, we're going to the rest of the specs. Most importantly, it's 299 euros. So that really, really did surprise me. It's got a bolt-on neck, a Michael bolt-on. Uh, three ports on the back, of course, obviously, and some to be honest, rather cheap looking tuners, but I've tuned it and they, they seem to be doing the job. So I was surprised and uh, made in Indonesia and some strap locks and uh, the old Gretsch volume down on the lower horn kind of thing. And this it's looking a really old sort of celluloid pick guard. Can you see that there? It's, uh, I have a, a 60s like Tysco thing and that has a pick guard that looks very much like this. So I'm loving the vintage looks. And we've got, I'm loving? When did I start saying that? Oh dear. Um, we've got the fretboard markers are just the sort of half moons at the top, which is pretty useful because you can see them when you're not, uh, when you're playing, sorry, which is, if, if you've got the dots, you can't see the dots when you're playing them. <laughs> Getting a bit close to that amplifier there. Um, amplifier is the Fender Deluxe Reverb, of course, going the to, to the Torpedo Captor X and, um, Let's play it around. I've got some pedals on the floor, which is the Glove from EHX, the Super Overdrive SD1 from Boss, and the Tumnus from Wampler. My cable's stuck on them. Right, here we go. It's quite pokey. There's quite a lot of mids coming through for a bridge pickup. Try the, the neck pickup. That's nice. So, it is performing okay, but I've noticed it's, it's slipping out of tune several times, so I'm gonna have to mess with that during the video, but I don't know if it's because it's new or because the tuners or something ain't that good. I will let you know before the end of this video. Let's retune. I'm enjoying the guitar. I mean, it feels nice. The neck is good. It's not sticky in any way. It, it, it's very, very playable. It sits there. I know that I'm hiding some of the guitar with my knee because I, I'm probably sat on the wrong stool. But um, yeah, so there it is. I, I think that I would probably hit that, that, um, that what's it called, volume knob. <laughs> what's it called? I'd probably hit the volume knob down if I was playing this. So you've got to really be careful there. But I dig this. I was massively in love with the, the silver one that Cheryl Crow had on her album cover. And this one would certainly scratch an itch. So I feel we need to play some more. Let's play some more. <laughs> Thank you. 
think this might be a guitar that needs new pickups in it. I think if you're looking at it and you like it and you're newish to guitar or you want something to play that looks beautiful, then there's no changes needed in the pickup department. But if you want to get something that's mind-blisteringly awesome, the pickups are not that brilliant, but it is 299 euros, so, you know, what are you gonna do? Let's try something a little less gainy. Let's go to the Tumnus and do some kind of bluesy thing. I feel now that this guitar feels great with a rocky sort of tone on the bridge and great with a bluesy tone, sort of a more subtle mellow tone on the neck. I don't think the tone wise it's doing both. I much, much prefer the rock on the bridge. Uh... Ah, that was on the neck. That's why I didn't sound right. Ah, come on, Andrew. Right, so, let's try that again. Although that mistake did just prove my point. So, it did prove my point, the fact that I didn't th think it sounded good on the neck as a rock machine, but as a bluesy kind of thing, it sounds almost too bright on the bridge. Uh... but then stick it on the neck. It's just really, really nice in that sort of, it sounds kind of muffled, but isn't on a blues tone. I mean, listen to the difference between the bridge and the neck. So they both kind of sound good there, but I prefer the neck. All right, it sounds like what it looks like. It looks like a, a vintage thing. Uh, the guy from Clownfire want to talk to me, so I'm gonna let them in for a second. And uh...
What I like to do about this part of the video is, or this part of playing the guitar, is just to see how it felt sitting with it, you know? And it sits really comfortably. And I know that might seem like a silly thing to say, but it is important to know how you're gonna, like if a guitar is sticking out, like if you've got a real pointy guitar or a V and it keeps flying off, that's frustrating. And of course I'm sitting down and could be using a strap, but here we are, deal with it. Uh, I think so far that for 299, this is a whole lot of fun. What else we got? I think the intonation is a little bit out. So if you're hearing tuning problems, it's the intonation. So we've got this wraparound bridge, which is adjustable in the sense that you can bring the bass side back or the treble side back, but you cannot adjust the, uh, the individual uh, saddles because they're part of the wraparound bridge, which is fine. But if you really, really, really wanted to get the most out of a guitar like this, you could replace that bridge with movable saddles. Those are pretty good. I've done a Goto one recently on a Hofner Shorty. That was a, that was a beautiful piece of gear. Um, I'm starting to dig the pickups more than I was a little bit ago. So let's, let's do some more playing and see if anything changes. switch as well. See if I can fix that. Come on! Yeah, it's a noisy switch. So if you're flipping pretty hard, probably not going to hear it. Those guitars are singing today. But if you're in something quite, quite beautiful, like... It didn't do it then, but it did it the second time. So overall, the electronics could probably not be better for the price. Uh, let's talk prices and expectations. I don't want to put anyone off this guitar by saying I don't think it's very good. I think it's fantastic. I just think that you've got to look at it from the bottom up rather than the top down. So if you're thinking about spending 299 euros on, on a guitar, an electric guitar that looks like this, then absolutely why not? It feels good. It's, it, it just it feels natural. It feels like it should feel. Um, you just think that if you're going from above to down, so if you've been playing sort of 1,000 euro guitars or 600 or 500 and you go into this, you might think that the, the pickups don't sound good or that switch might be uh, unacceptable, you know? but, but I think it is. And I think that if you just maybe, I don't think it's one of those switches that's gonna clean up. That's a big issue for me. But I do think that it's a very cheap uh, replacement if it is such a big issue. Maybe there's reliability issues, I don't know. One of the things I don't like about it is the truss rod cover, which I know is a bit of a petty thing to say, but um, even the Mybacks have them. Do they? Hang on, I'm just trying to think. There's a Mybach around here somewhere. Take a look at a Mybach, which I absolutely adore, uh, generally speaking. Hello, stand. And you'll find, that, um, you'll find that the Mybachs also have one of these. I just think that they're, they're designless, you know what I mean? Like, there's no, they could have done something, but they did nothing. So there it is again. That's my pick that I don't like, but it's, it's not fair to say that because it is a great guitar. I will round this off with a bit more playing and say that if you've looked at like one of these and you think I want a gold guitar that's a single cut is around 299 euros, you're probably well in. Notice that it hasn't gone out of tune at all. I haven't been playing that much. The, um, the setup could be better, but looking at it, well, the, the truss rod's nice. I just think 
maybe you could you might want to shim the neck and you can because it's a bolt on i'd want lower action <laughs> That's where the neck pickup lets it down, then it just gets too muffled. So I'm going to go back to my original, original statement and say, bridge pickup, brilliant for rock, nice and bitey, nice and crunchy and thrusty. Neck pickup, not so much good. Like if you're going to switch to a neck pickup, you might want a, just a warmer, rounder tone. It, it just loses a lot of its impact. There we have it, the Gretsch Streamliner Jet Junior, Junior Jet Club G2210. I'll stand by my, my, my final word on this guitar is that if you're looking for some sort of single cut with two humbuckers that you want a little bit different, you want to look a little bit snazzy on stage or wherever, I'd recommend it. I'd say go for it, choose it, love it, take care of it, probably change the pickups. <laughs> All right, um, thank you much for watching. Thank you much. Thank you very much for watching. There are other videos of me over there. Thank you to Clang Faber for hosting me today and to let me borrow their, their Gretsch. I'm going to play some more Gretsch, I think, so um, make sure you follow the channel and subscribe so you get to see that. I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.